Hi, have you ever thought to yourself, what is the equation of a circle of longitude on the earth? Well, now that you're intrigued, let's get started. This material is the result of the math as a hobby work that my friend Paul McDowell and I, Lawrence Whitfield, have been doing together. So let's take a look. I got interested in knowing what is the equation of any circle of longitude on the earth. So we had to make some assumptions. We assume that the earth is a sphere. After all, that's pretty close. And we assume that the tilt of the earth is 23.5 degrees. That's also close. Now in this exercise, we're going to use the radius of the earth as three units of length. Well, that doesn't make much sense, except that it was necessary to make it fit on the screen. Here's a summary of the math that we used. So this is a bit of a learning journey and thank you for watching along. I was pretty excited to work this out. I'm not a professional math person. I did have a degree in math from many years ago. And uh, so I'm just an amateur and I um, appreciate you uh, following along and hope you learn something and maybe get inspired uh, to do something like this yourself. So there's pretty basic high school stuff. I do use parametric equations, vectors, and dot product, which if you're a high school student and you're watching, maybe get your teacher because this is very basic what we've done. It's just a fair amount of heavy lifting. And last amount, lastly, I've used GeoGebra, both for illustrations and animations to prove the final answers are correct because that's something that's always fun to do. Well, we had to begin by making a choice. And what is that choice? We have to choose whether we want to think of the earth as being on a slope or on an angle like this being tilted, uh, the way it usually is if you have a globe in your house or your classroom, or whether it's straight up and down. And you could argue either way because the straight up and down is in a map uh, usually in a flat map, the north is directly to the south or to the top of the page, whereas on a globe, as we say, they usually show it tilted. Well, we chose to go with the tilted option here because the math is more interesting for one thing, and later on in some subsequent uh, videos, uh, it may be useful for us to have done it that way. Well, uh, to get started, the one observation is that every circle of longitude is a great circle. And a great circle is any circle that cuts a sphere exactly in half, in any direction. But in our case, we're only worried about the ones that uh, follow the path of the Earth, uh, passing through the North and South Pole. Now, before we get into the how to find the equation of a, or how to find the equation of a great circle, uh, let's just remind ourselves a few things about the Earth. So, any circle of longitude is a great circle. The equator over here is a great circle, but who, what are some ones that are not a great circle? Well, the Arctic circle way up here, the Antarctic circle way down here, the two different tropics, Capricorn and Cancer, and uh, any circle of latitude um, that uh, anywhere else on the earth is not a great circle. So with that little refresher of what a great circle is, we ask ourselves the question, what is the equation of a great circle? Well, it turns out there isn't actually one as such. And so we're going to use this parametric equation. As a matter of fact, I'm calling an equation, but notice that there's nowhere in here that has an equal sign. So we're really describing a set of points, x, y, and z, such that all the following are true. Well, I didn't know what this equation was, but I was able to look it up on the internet. I, internet, I tried to look it up again later, and found that I could not find it. So I'll just express my anonymous thank you to the person that posted this because I sure had a lot of fun using it and, and came out with a pretty good result in the end. Well, let's do a little bit of a walkthrough here. So P is for the center of the earth, or P is for the center of the circle in question, which we're going to treat as the center of the earth, albeit full of molten lava. And then we take, um, this is a little bit like spherical coordinates, but not quite because we've tipped, we, we, we've tipped the circles that we're looking for. So it's gonna be the radius times the cosine 
of t where t is our parameter. I didn't use theta or, or any other Greek letter just for ease of typing. So t is going to be a parameter. We're going to have to find these two vectors, v1 and v2. And once we find v2, we're going to multiply the radius times the sine of t times every one of the coordinates in our second vector. And um, there's a few things that have to be true of our two vectors. They have to be unit vectors and they have to be perpendicular to each other. The trickiest part by far and away is going to be to find which two vectors v1 and v2 that we should use. And so we're going to come to that. After that, there's just some substitution. It's, it's tricky enough and it's error prone as I will probably stumble even as we go through it. But the trickiest part is finding v1 and v2. Now, I had a big breakthrough as I went through this, and that was why I'm excited, and I'm excited to share this with whoever's watching. Uh, but I'm going to have to just kind of hand it to you, uh, and then later on I'll come back and you'll see why, why it was uh, so important. So before we do the great circle of any circle of longitude, I want to do a very special great circle, which is the unit equator which is a great circle on the sphere of radius one. And the reason I wanna do that will become evident later. So we wanna look at this red circle and um, we're going to look at it in the case where it has a radius of one. So we're going to do that before we get into the main attraction. All right, to find the parametric equation of the blue circle here, we switch from red to blue. Um, we're going to find the values for, we're going to find the values for these two red unit vectors and any pair will do as long as they're perpendicular to each other. So let's do a little bit of an IQ test for those of you who remember like a clock with hands on it. So this might be say, um, I don't know, 9.30. You could have also used nine o'clock. You could have used uh, three o'clock or 3.30 or five to, to two maybe. Uh, so all these combinations, any combination will do as long as this is 90 degrees. Well, we like to make our lives a little bit easy. So we chose the first vector to lie along here along the X axis. And uh, so we're going to give it coordinates one, zero, zero. And then now the next trick is to find this one, which is not, not gonna be quite as easy because it's tilted. So let's move on to our next diagram. So on this diagram, the way it works is remember the, we, if we were doing this one, this would be the North Pole straight up and down, but we've tilted it by 23.5 degrees because we're doing this one. So we get a diagram that looks like this. Now, if the X axis is going into the page and back out again, then um, we, we, we can just look at these triangles and we'll worry about fitting them into the three dimensions later. So we're over here because we wanna know, we, we, we wanna find our vector that's lying along here. And we wanna express it in terms of coordinates. So it's raised up by 23.5 degrees because the axis is tilted by 23.5 degrees and you can work your way across. So the, in order to find how far over, we're gonna do the cosine. So cosine of 23.5 degrees is 0 0.92. Because we're going to the left, we're gonna call that one a negative. That's gonna become important. And how far up are we? We're going to use the sine of 23.5 degrees, which is 0 0.4. So just make a mental note of these numbers uh, right here, and then we'll go on to the next page and plug them in. So our V2, which is this one, uh, we can use the coordinates zero because it lies on the Z and the y axis or uh, plane. So the x coordinate is zero. The y coordinate is minus 0 0.92 because y is positive in this direction and it's negative in this direction. And z is 0 0.4 because it's positive going up. So look at that. We have these two really handy vectors and we'll just confirm that they're perpendicular although they certainly look like it. So we're going to do something called taking the dot product. So I've listed the two vectors out here. And of course they have offsetting zeros, which makes our life easy. So zero plus zero plus zero is zero. And we pass the test. So now we've got our two vectors V1 and V2 that we can use. So we're gonna come back to our equation. 
So we want to find, uh, we want to use this equation and we're going to use P equals zero, zero, zero. We're going to use V equals one comma zero comma zero. And we're going to use V2 equals zero comma minus 9.2 comma 0 0.4 and R is one. So that we ran out of space now. So let's come over and do it. Um, so the cosine of T times one is the cosine of T, which lands down here in, uh, in this position. And then the cosine of T times zero is zero and zero is zero. So that this section right here is this. Now this plus sign is same as this plus sign. So now we're going to do one times the sine of T times each one of these. So one times the sine of T times zero, zero, one times the sine of t times minus 0 0.92 is minus 0 0.92 sine sine of t, and our z coordinate becomes 0 0.4 times the sine of t. So now we have uh, our x, y, z as it exists on the, uh, or now we have our equation of this blue circle, which is the unit uh, equator. So that's going to be quite useful for us, although it might not have been obvious why we did that uh, before we got onto the task at hand. So here's our, uh, just copied over, here's our parametric equation um, for uh, the, unit, the unit equator. So before proceeding, we're just gonna to toggle over to GeoGebra and prove that we, this equation that we have marked in red is correct. So I'm going to toggle, let's hold our breath. I hope I don't land on my grocery list. Um, here's close enough. So I just have to turn off my zoom controls, just bear with me. And uh, the one I want is this one. Okay, so how I'm going to prove it is I did cheat and I did draw the unit uh, equator as in, in red here. And when I, I have a point D in which I have put in our equation that we just worked out, cosine of T minus uh, 9.2, minus 0.92 sine T and 0 0.4 sine T. And that's this point D. And I set the trace on, now I'm gonna run my parameter T from zero to 360 degrees or zero to two pi. And it should trace out the unit equation. So hold our breath, there it goes. So it worked. So no one can argue. Um, we now have an equation for the unit equator. Now, why does that matter? We'll come to that in a moment. Okay, we have our equation for the unit equator. Now it's time to move on to the generic equation of any circle of longitude. And we will see how we're going to use the unit equator. So how you can think of this is in two ways. If you lived on this green one, within the course of 24 hours, your circle of longitude will occupy every circle of longitude on the surface of the earth because the earth is spinning. Or another way to think of it is, let's say it's an exact instant in time, one one millionth of one one millionth of one one millionth of a second, then every, there are so many circles of longitude there. I've drawn the 24 common ones here, um, or there are of course an infinite number in between. So either way, we're going to use our unit equator in order to find the equation of any one of these circles of longitude. And then we're going to be really proud of ourselves. Okay, so now we've drawn the bigger circle. So as a reminder, here's how it works. We've tipped the equator by 23.5 degrees, as you can see here with this purple segment. And we're going to use one of our, one of our uh, vectors, we're going to use as any vector that exists on this unit equator. And that'll be our V1. And then we just have to find this one. So, that's why we are with that, that. That's how it's going to work. So here's this is what we're going to use for v1, and then we still have to find v2. But we're going to just jump back over to GeoGebra again, where we land. Who knows? 
And we're going to look at this. So here we can see a diagram. Now I'm going to explain why it was such a big breakthrough. Why, why using the unit equator allowed me to produce any uh, circle of longitude. So if I find my point J, I will show you what I mean. So as the V1 moves around, I get my various, now this, this vector and this vector will give me this circle of longitude. If I choose a different pair, this vector and this vector will give me yet another one. And this vector that lies on the Earth's axis here, it never moves. So we can just figure out what it is and we'll always use it. And then we're going to use for our other vector, we're going to use this one as described on the unit equator. So here we are. Uh, I'm just gonna go on to the next slide. So we know that for the, I keep repeating it, but, I, but just so that we keep it in our minds, this is what we're going to use for V1. And now we have to get V2. Now at least V2 is not moving, so it should be a little more straightforward. So we're going to come back to the same diagram we used before, only this time we're going to look at this section from F to the origin here. Now, so again, the, uh, so this is 66.5 degrees because the earth is tilted by 23.5. So the distance across is going to be the cosine, which is cosine of 66.5 is 0 0.4. And the height is going to be 0 0.9. And that's what we're going to use for V2. So here's our V2, which is going to be 0, uh, 0 0.4, and 0 0.92. So this vector, that will be this one. And then we're going to use our famous equation for the other one. So let's keep going. So here we go. As it is with any equation, once you, it, when you first look at it, if you've never seen it before, you think to yourself, whoo, that looks complicated. But then if you've used it two or three times, it, it starts to get a little easier. But this one's gonna be a little bit more of a mouthful because of the parameter that we already have in V1. So note, in this occasion, we're using K because we've already used T. So we wanna find this expression, which is P plus uh, this function of K times V1 and this function of K times V2. So that's what we're going to do next. So we've all got it all lined up here, P, V1, V2 and R and K is our parameter. So now anybody should be able to do this. Um, and I encourage you maybe to do this on your own uh, because the hand that does the writing is attached to the brain that does the learning. So we're going to take three times the cosine of K times all of V1. So three times the cosine of K, here's V1 cosine of T three times the cosine of K times the cosine of T. And then for the Y uh, component, we're going to have three times the cosine of K times zero minus 0 0.92 times the sine of T, which gives minus 2.76 cosine K sine T. Then we're going to do three times the cosine of K times 0 0.4, and that's going to give us 1.2 cosine K sine T. And again, this plus is the same as this plus. So now we're gonna move on to this uh, uh, section. So three times the sine of K times zero is zero. Three times the sine of K times 0 0.4 is 1.2. And three times the sine of K times 0 0.92 is 2.76 sine of K. And you put them all together, they don't, they don't really collapse because the, there aren't really like terms. So that's our equation. So we did it. We, the, we met our goal of finding the equation uh, or an expression for any circle of longitude uh, on the earth. Now, before we celebrate too much, we'll just go ahead. And uh, it's our, our, by the way, our expression here is it's not like it's going to win a prize at the fall fair for being pretty, but we accomplished our goal. Uh, but let's just do some housekeeping. 
Um, we do the dot product to prove our vectors were orthogonal. So we got a zero here, we get a zero. Here we got the minus sign, so we get the uh, minus here and we get the exact same expression over here, but it's a plus. So luckily enough, uh, everything works out and our we passed the test that we used legitimate V1 and V2. Uh, I wanna jump back over to GeoGebra one more time to just prove that it worked. So this time we're going to come here. So here's our giant expression we came up with. I won't read it all out because it's a bit of a mouthful. And um, so what we've done is we, for any value of T, like we saw before, we will get a different, we can generate any circle of longitude if we have no the right value for T and we can trace out that circle of longitude uh, uh, by using our value of K. And you can see we must have done it right because it stays on the stays on the circle. If I choose a different one and I do it again, we're still on doing good. And we'll just do one more and look at that. So everything worked out good. Um, so we'll just jump back to over here. I will say that back on, what, what's interesting here is in GeoGebra, if you run both K and T at the same time, you get something that looks like a pretzel. So I'll let you try that out on your own. I do want to thank you for watching and look forward to producing similar material in the future. And by the way, before we go, here we, I did, I redid the work using the average radius of the earth, which is 6,371 kilometers. And you get this nice expression here. So if you want to copy that down and take it to class, you're probably the only person in your class who has an expression for any value, for any circle of longitude on the entire earth. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.